Ladies and gentlemen, we are back for another series review straight from Netflix, Three Body Problems. So now this is actually based on the three book series. Now, the premise of this is going to be hard for me to say without spoiling too much because it's a non-spoiler series review. But I'll do the best I can. A group of scientists are trying to find a way in present day of preserving humanity against a very great threat that started in the 1960, in the 1960s across space and time. That's the best way I can kind of summarize this. <laughs> John is insane. This um, is a it's trip, amazing, bro. It's amazing cast. It's got um, Eliza Gonzalez, John Bradley, Sam Tolley, um, Benedict Wong, um, Giovanna Depo, if you see him from Babylon Fences, um alex sharp it's got liam cunningham from of course game of thrones jonathan price from game of thrones and of course you know don bradley was from game of thrones as well because the creators or the people that were behind game of thrones david benoff and db wise are back and are the ones behind this insane ride of a show so i'm gonna go ahead and bring on my co-host here Dizzy, what's up? You, what's up, man? Um, so I'm really excited. Like this whole episode, the whole series. I mean, I know it, going into it, I knew it was going to be a little bit of a trip, but um, it started off with a bang. It really did. I mean, there was so many moments where I was just like, like I didn't know what was going on. I didn't know what was real. I didn't know what was. I didn't know what they were doing. But it's definitely uh, they it got it got its moments. It's gonna have you questioning things. It's gonna have you asking so many questions and um i feel like those kind of shows are always the best so i mean and and they they have a lot of crazy moments i mean there was some moments that i didn't think that they would do i don't want to say too much obviously but in the first episode it kind of leads with all of them coming together i mean it's kind of a big shocker and again it asks makes you ask all these questions and um again i always appreciate a good show that makes me like question my sanity so yeah that's always great yeah, I think that the show legit took me over because I was gone for a second. <laughs> like, I, like, it was just a fog. I don't know if you can see me or not, busy, but, um, but yeah, the show, from an imagery standpoint, just kind of stating that, like, there are certain threads um, with physics and technology and innovation. Mm-hmm. I mean, just taking this device, for instance, I mean, we already know that the Apple Pro just came out. And a lot of people are really enticed by the Vision Pro and what its capabilities are from an AR, VR standpoint. But this is on another level. Like, and when you first kind of get immersed into it, it's unlike you, you don't know what's really happening. And much mm-hmm. like he said, that's the crux of the show. Because one of the main characters, her name's Augie, played by Eliza Gonzalez, she looks up and starts seeing a countdown. That's all she's seeing. She's seeing a countdown and she does not know what the heck is going on. And it's terrifying because much like you guys saw me, everybody else is a fog outside of the scope of where this countdown is going on. And when you kind of allow the story to pick up, you start to see there are things that are happening specifically to scientists and colleagues that are the best and the brightest of the world. But much like some really good shows, much like Monarch and other shows, um Fargo um they go back into the past and there's a very pivotal moment happens in the very first episode where a physicist is being questioned in the 1960s and that's what catapults all this from kind of moving forward I think honestly in my personal opinion the way that they're handling the storytelling even though they're going back and forth from time sometimes that can be very stagnant Mm -hmm. and jarring I think it's just so intriguing like Mm -hmm. the way they're kind of executing the plot and the pacing. There's never a moment I feel bored. There's never a moment I'm mm-hmm. like, well, this is this makes sense for this because there's a reason for it. And the thing I like about that is that there's so much re- re- relevance, excuse me, from um, you know, the flashbacks to current day. And I feel like a lot of shows when they try to attempt it, they of course obviously there's going to be relevance, but they don't really reveal the big, you know, like how relevant it is until maybe episode two, three, four, but they really letting you know, like how important it is to see what's going on in the past compared to what's going on kind of in the present day. Cause of what's going on in the present day. Um, it, it le- again, leaves you with a lot of questions the way the end the first episode, for an example, it's just like, 
what the hell is going on? Like, this doesn't make sense. This isn't what what's going on. But um, <laughs> compared to what's happening in the past, of course, it explains what some possibilities are. And um, I think without the flashbacks, it would I don't know. I don't know how they would make it work. But I mean, I it just it's such a cool part of of the show to see uh, kind of like that kind of error compared to where we are now. I don't, I don't know. I just, I really enjoyed that. Yeah. I think the thing I can say about the show too, is that the, the way that they're handling the script for this, you don't really know. I think I watched the first episode three times intentionally, not (laughs) because I didn't know, but because I was so intrigued as Mm -hmm. to how deep seated this is going and characters like Benedict Wong's character, who's kind of like an investigator checking on, you know, Eliza Gonzalez and Jevion's character, who are physicists and scientists. Like it goes down this interesting rabbit hole that I think that it feels like pure science fiction. That's the best way I can say it without spoiling anything. I have no idea what's truly going on. And see, look. He's gone again. They right got now. him. They got him. <laughs> caught up. <laughs> but the thing is, up. I mean, the one thing that I'm truly enjoying about this is, again, like the questions that I'm having. And, um, you know, I know a lot of you who have seen the trailer, it looks like a trip. Like, it looks insane. And they really get you to that point and, like, you know, off the rip. So, um, and I know with you, like, the, you were so interested with the third episode, with the first episode, when we were watching, like, we watched the episodes together while we were waiting to watch episode two. Yeah. I, you're like, you, you sent me a text. You're like, yeah, so I just watched it for a third time. And that's just how, <laughs> that's how good it is. I mean, that's how, like, like ne- not even necessarily good, but, like, how well the writing has gotten us intrigued. Like, the the it's just, it's so different from what's out right now. And I think that's the reason why we're kind of buying into it. Because, um, you know, I feel like, yeah, a lot of shows can have really great twists, a lot of great, you know, WTF moments. But to do it right at the start of the show is pretty, pretty interesting. And I, now, I really like what they're what they're doing. Now, I want to ask you the elephant in the room, because I know you you did watch Game of Thrones, right? Of course. Well, do you feel like DB and David <laughs> feel like they have something to prove? Not to say that this is, I mean, this is a, oh, this is no. a we got to talk about it. People are going to ask about it. Because the truth of the matter is this is coming from like a book series. This is coming from like okay. a book series as well, like three specific books. And yeah, like the way that it's being executed is it's being executed in a specific kind of way. Well, they have material to work with. So I don't think we should be as afraid as um say if there was say a season eight of Game of Thrones. Um, you know, with what they were doing here, they have a lot of stuff to work with. And I feel like that's, you know, always great when you have material, um, then to just, you know, sometimes people when they're trying to write on their own can be a little all over the place. Um, this is such a dangerous spot to talk about, but it's like, I think they they did it. I think they did a really good job. I mean, again, they have the material. You can't really like a lot of you'd be surprised. A lot of people tend to mess up when they yeah. even if they do have the material. Yeah. But I feel like this works. And again, I'm not I, it's hard for me to even say that considering I haven't even read the books. Like, I don't really know what I'm getting into. But as for a good television show, like you don't need to read the the game. You say the the. Game of Thrones books to know that season eight wasn't top tier. You know what I'm saying? So it all comes down to writing and you can tell that there is a lot of, you know, great stuff in uh, this first season of this show. So, I mean, yeah. Yeah. I mean, the reason why I asked that is because I think people are going to be, they're going to be a little scared moving Mm -hmm. into this. And I don't want them to perceive that we're not going to talk about it. Yeah. In my personal perspective like the writing i don't necessarily blame the writing so much as the execution of okay. the final season of game of thrones okay. i think that the writing definitely was not a good cushion from a foundational standpoint but i think the execution of how they tried to pace things was a big part of the pivot problem whereas this show is paced really well yeah a lot that happens in the first episode and there's a lot that transitions to the following. 
And I think that the way that they are handling the script with this, they're handling it with so much care that it, it feels very important. Everything that's happening, it feels like there's a broader scope and there's meaning behind every small little moment. The good thing is you've got amazing actors. <laughs> got <laughs> My boy. Already are invested <laughs> in that we're hoping, you know, to get some kind of payoff. And I mean, I think that the truth of the matter is with this specific series, I think that there's a lot that they can do with this cast. So much talent. There's a lot that they can do from a world building standpoint. Like just, just off the science alone, I'm all the way there. And mm -hmm. I think that if you give it a chance, I think that David and DB have something special for you in this one. And I, I'm all the way behind it. Um, I still have some more episodes we got to finish, but mm -hmm. what we've seen... I think that this is a really good ride in the cast. And it's so unique. Oh, and yeah. and that's one thing I love so much. You know, like I I, I don't want to say this because it's not true about everything, but I feel like there are times where we're seeing a lot of repetition in um some shows, and it doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad thing because some of those shows can stand on its own without being compared to some other things. But with this specifically, it's so unique. It's hard to compare it to other things. You know, it's just it kind of stands stands on its own of course there are similarities to some other stuff but it's just i don't know it's so much fun i mean again the flashbacks the the universal uh, uh kind of uh weird moments i mean i don't know it's just it's such a trip it's really hard to explain you know what i'm saying because it's just like yeah. how do you explain some of the things that happen without spoiling because again it's some stuff that it isn't really common in in a lot of media so there isn't really a common term that I can think of off the top of my head other than um, a mine F, you know, just like, you know, it's just, it's all over the place, man. Yeah. I think the real, the only negative I have is not even the show. I think in, this is not Netflix's window. This show to me will be better served on a weekly basis. Mm -hmm. I think that much like the last of us and other shows before that, this is one of those shows that you need to sit with the episode and then move forward. I can't imagine binging through this. I think that I would immediately want to watch the next episode maybe, but I think that you need to kind of sit with each episode yeah. and allow breathing room. I really wish that Netflix would open up certain shows to be on a weekly basis. And it's they've done that. Crazy. They've done that. Like they've done something like that. I know with Arcane, they were dropping three every week. Instead right. of doing, you know, and I feel like that that's a cool option. Um, like I said, and I brought this up a few minutes ago, but you watched the first episode three times. And that was just so you could not even just process everything, but because it was just, there was so much going on. It's just one of those things that it's kind of cool to do. You know what I'm saying? So it's like having this on a week to week basis would be a really great for this show specifically, because there are so many moments that have you like, like, in need to process things like it, 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 you're questioning things you know so to be able to fully kind of absorb what you just watched without diving into the next one and being kind of overwhelmed i feel like it's one of those cool things you know yeah yeah i really wish they would do that for this series um because i feel like if people try to binge this they're gonna miss a lot mm -hmm. i think they're just gonna miss a lot um because i think this show bodes Rewatches and I, it'd be hard for me to conceivably go like, yeah, I'm gonna go rewatch eight episodes all over again when two episodes alone are a lot to just digest. So that's the only thing that I'm a little concerned about. But from what I've seen so far, um, I think this is right up there. I, I rest this at like an A, um, A to A minus. I, I don't really have any negatives with it. I mean, it's it's engaging, it's thrilling, it makes you think. It's scary at times. It's freaking exactly. gory at times. Um, it's, it's really hard emotionally. Um, it's kind of harsh at times. But I think if you stick with it, I think you're going to get something special out of it. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to have to sit by that. Give it an A-. minus. Again, not much that I, I didn't like about it, but I know that there's going to be a lot more craziness for you guys. I mean, again, when we're able to finally talk about it without having to be really like, you know, vague, sensitive about spoiler yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I feel like uh, we'll be able to have a more in-depth uh, discussion about it. So, I mean, really excited to talk to you guys about that. But, yeah, again, aim honest.
Yeah, maybe next time we come with a whole squad. Sure, so, man. Yeah, so let me know what you guys think about uh, three pro man three, three body, body pro problem. There it is. Sleepy, it's my birthday. I got him. <laughs> but we're gonna go busy. Where can everybody find your content, man? Busy Braun, of course, everywhere. Busy reactions on um Instagram, and of course, you can find me on Team JVS, uh, dropping reactions with our boy Sam. Which is also his birthday. So happy birthday, champ. Oh, man. man. <laughs> we'll take 30 seconds of this uh, episode to sing happy birthday. Hat and I'm playing, but like, nah, again, solid show. Excited to dive into it. Happy birthday. <laughs> uh, cannot, will not, and will not let go. All right, you guys, we're going to go. <laughs> we'll be back for maybe a spoiler discussion on the show. Okay, guys? Peace, people. Top of the